YouTube deleted this video, and fortunately I had a version of it saved. A YouTube downloader thing I use. It didn't want to cooperate, and OBS didn't want to cooperate either when I was trying to record the thing, so I had to small screen it and record it, and now I have to, now I have to edit it a lot. Through all of these documents, which you can find on theking.com, it breaks down the lineage, okay? What it basically boils down to is says that Queen Anne Boleyn avoided her uh, 1536 execution in the Tower of London. She did not die, you people. Okay? Queen Anne Boleyn's grandson, Sir Walter Raleigh, was born with the title of Christ and earned the title of Christ in July, July 1596, 1609, 1610. You heard me right. Christ. Guess who that leads to? Joseph Gregory Hallett was born on Rosh Hashanah. Reinvigorating England's royal, royal Holy Grail lineage, Christian mystery lineage, inherited the title of Christ off his great ten times grandfather, Walter Raleigh, certifying title of Christ, therefore automatically King of England. And confirmed. The Queen and the Pope and the Pope and the Pope certified that the execution was fake and both bred posthumously, resulting in G. Hallett, the main S.Y.Y. King of England. We have a new king! If you're Joseph Gregory, <laughs> where does the title King John III come from? Well, we had um, King John of England, who's my ancestor. He's my great times 22 grandfather. Okay. And then we had Prince Marcos Manuel, who's King John II of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and all Ireland. And now we've got myself, which is King John III. Now to carry the title King John of England or any related aspect, you have to be the Sangreal or the Christ. You have to be the Sangreal or the Christ. Right? Only the Sangreal can hold the title King John of England. And um, because my cult was Sangreal, Sangreal, I gave him the Duchy of Saxony covered in Gotha, which is 0.2% of Germany. It's got 13 castles, including the Diet, which is the old parliament. Um, and he gave me King of England and said, go to England, take your chances. <clears throat> so here I am. <laughs> Post them to those named uh, the respondents, which includes the Queen. and. So what the beauty of that was, I'd send them to POTUS, their president, Donald John Trump, and I'd send them to the Queen. So POTUS would get them a few days after the Queen, and he'd bring up the Queen or contact the Queen through you know, diplomatic channels. And say, is this true? Is there any bit of it you want to deny? And, and she's just be like, look, you couldn't deny anything. I'm going to have to make a decision and I only hope to God that it's the right decision. But I would say without question, it's the biggest decision I've ever had to make. It's the biggest decision I've ever had to make. It's the biggest decision I've ever had to make. So she went into hiding and, and Trump just took over, kind of took over the British Empire until I move in. Basically what's happening. Because that, that's exactly, you know, what, uh... Trump and Q and the White Hats and Patriots are doing is tearing their association 
with the treaties that were signed in 1720, which basically enslaved the American nation, nation into, um, into slavery under the monarchy to the point that all the taxes from America were being sent to the city of London and then siphoned to the Vatican. And so it's all just working together. So what I managed to do with the title Christ was uh, execute the Knights of Malta out of the Vatican and they're in charge of the world's money supply. Yeah. And then Trump took note of that in some of my documents and that allowed President Donald John Trump to absorb the Fed into the treasury with him as the treasury, head of the treasury. Yeah. yeah. Right, so I've achieved that. And the Vatican's now no longer in control of money supply. And I am uh, a, a, a firm, confirmed and certified with the Pope of Christ by the Pope, who's then done it in action and named me on Easter Friday. And then before that, he's closed down the whole world for Lent. Yeah, closed down the whole world for Lent. And um, that means that I own everything the Vatican does. And he's also abdicated his title, Vicar of Christ. I'm currently the owner of the world. So 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 I'm currently the owner of the world. With regard to the Vatican, yeah. well, I know from my sources yeah. that the Pope and 350 members of the Vatican staff have been arrested and charged and are currently all under license. Pope is currently at his holiday residence, not in the Vatican. Yeah, yeah. And he's being guarded there. It's no wonder yeah. that Donald Trump must yeah. drain the swamp, is it? Yeah, uh, it's just it's no. horrible. It's just horrible. But the, the British Royal Navy come up to me and they say, we are absolutely sick of transporting the Queen's heroin around. That's all we do. Anyway, it's, well, all, it's, it, it's all over, man. Have you got Trump's your, winning yeah. and we've got, we've got King John III ready to go. Yeah, well, it's happening. You know, people say, when's it happening? When's it happening? And I'm going, it just happened yeah. like five minutes ago. Like, <laughs> like, like, taking the emblem of the palace, taking the emblem of uh, 10 Downing Street and, you know, photo montaging my emblem on there. And people are going, is that real? Is that real? Is that real? It's like they oh. took it off so that I couldn't do that. I think the next step is we've got to somehow um, get to Buckingham Palace. Has gone. So we can prove all this up and, um, the Get in the right rooms. Oh, boarded up yeah. from the inside. No one, no one living there. It's just been renovated for me. And you've just had like um, two, what, two, two months off, March, April, May. You just had two months off to paint all of the United Kingdom for me. You know, yeah. and, let, and let the smell, of, let the paint smell go away, so I can just you know drive through my carriage and wave, drive through my carriage and wave, drive through my carriage and wave, and everything's painted. And, and the palace is all done up. <clears throat> was born with the title of Christ and earned the title of Christ in July 1596, 1609 to 1610. You heard me right, Christ. You heard me right, Christ. reinvigorating England's royal, royal Holy Grail lineage, Christian mystery lineage. This is what's going to happen. And for the incumbent Queen Elizabeth II to run smoothly transfer these formable, formerly honorable styles and titles into the care and custody of Joseph Gregory Hallett without further intentional conflict or mass death, currently advertised and admitted on behalf of Queenie II and the British royal family who have gone into hiding and abandoned their throne and crown since these legal documents were registered, affirmed and confirmed, certified, received by the placeholder Prince William. And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. In the sixth chapter of the biblical book of Revelation, Jesus Christ opens a prophetic scroll, sealed in seven places. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a bow, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. 
The first rider carries a bow and wears a crown. The original Greek says a laurel wreath, the ancient symbol of a conquering victor. But what does it all mean? This horseman has often been confused with the returning Christ. This horseman has often been confused with the returning Christ, described in chapter 19 of the same book, because he also rides a white horse. The returning Christ is dressed in a robe stained with blood, wearing multiple crowns. The Greek is diadems, not a laurel wreath. He is accompanied by angelic beings on white horses, and his weapon is the sword of his mouth, not a bow. The obvious differences between the two images suggest that the first of the four horsemen represents a counterfeit or false messiah. The disciples asked, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? He said, take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ. I am the Christ. Now to carry the title King John of England or any related aspect, you have to be the Sangreal or the Christ, or the Christ, or the Christ. I'm saying, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. Jesus' warning here about not being fooled parallels the first broken seal in the book of Revelation. He clearly identifies the white horse and its rider. People who claim to be the anointed one are false messiahs men who counterfeit the future role of the true returning Christ. And the counterfeit white horseman will continue to ride until he's vanquished by Christ at his coming. The disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of thy coming, and of the end of the world? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs, and false prophets, and shall shew great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. They shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. If there is one thing that people ask about, it's when is the second coming of Christ? When do we know that it's truly near? Daniel saw how the Antichrist will come onto the scene as this false messiah, and just as Jesus had a three and a half year ministry, we saw how the false messiah will also have a three and a half year ministry, but his ministry will be evil. When Jesus came onto the scene in 27 AD, there was this seven year period, and in the middle of it, his body, the temple of God, was crucified. And after that, he rose again. Well, we also saw how in Daniel chapter nine, that the seven year period from Jesus' day will have a future parallel. And in the future, just as Jesus' body, the temple of God, was destroyed in the middle, the false messiah will come onto the scene and will try to destroy the temple of God in the middle of the future seven-year period. At the start of the seven-year period, the Antichrist will be a national or political leader. And he will be completely human. He will seem like a normal guy, but at the middle point of the seven year period, something happens. Death to the tyrant! Many believe that he will be assassinated. He will deceive the world with a counterfeit miracle, causing them to believe that he rose from the dead. And then the world will believe that he is divine. For that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion 
that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Cosmic fire. Revelation chapter 1 verse 7. It says, Look, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye will see him.